How are you? A pleasure, an honor to be here, sir. Uh, I just came from Florida. I went on a family reunion. And family reunions are usually designed to torture me. Uh, my family took me to a water park. And I thought a water park, I thought frolicking in the water, I love to swim, it's nice, right? There were horrible rides at the water park. There was a giant slide. And when you think slide, you think, wee. This is not what happened to me. I didn't go, wee. I went, ah! <laughs> now that's not a slide, that's a drop. If it said giant drop, I wouldn't have walked up. At no point did my butt touch slide. If you reach around and your butt's not touching slide, that's a free fall. <laughs> I was not issued a parachute. And it's 20 stories high, and it's like I'm in Cirque du Soleil and climbing up this thing. It's $40 to get in, build an elevator. You should carry me up there. I'm in flip-flops in a Speedo, and I, well, listen first. I didn't buy a Speedo. I got hit in the wave pool and my bathing suit had Speedoed up on me. I couldn't get it out. My brother-in-law had to cut it off me at the hotel. He's a surgeon. So, so I'm climbing up this ladder and people yell at you if you're not walking fast enough. I was in no mood. I will break wind and you will disintegrate before you hit the ground. Do I look happy up here? And it's high. Halfway up, I'm going, Ricola. And so I'm falling and I see my family walking up. It's not a slide. And I hit the water. Oh God. Those people shouldn't have been there. You're supposed to swim out of the way. Then, then there was a little pool. I thought that would be okay. My butt touched slide. Little slide, but the pool was too short. I didn't even go in the pool. I hydroplaned across it. I went through the fence out into the parking lot. And I mean way out there, H-I-J. They wanted me to pay to get in again. I said, I'm in a Speedo. You see a wallet anywhere? He said, I don't even see the Speedo. So, so what I'm telling you is sometimes, although a water park looks fun, sometimes it is a nay-nay. I'll tell you more things that are nay-nays. There are a lot of summertime nay-nays. Water skiing. I went water skiing in Maui years ago. Uh, I was drinking tequila, and I don't drink tequila anymore. It makes me believe stuff that isn't real. Uh, like I can water ski. And I, I actually looked good until the boat pulled me. And then it was like snorkeling underwater really fast. I heard a barracuda go, what was that? And I water ski mostly with my face. <laughs> and I would bob my head out of the water periodically, you know, to scream for help. It wasn't an audible scream, it was like, Aah! at that point, killer whales are following. It's the sound, they'd become curious and concerned. <laughs> Everybody's here, who's that over there? <laughs> ah! Let him go, he's just a baby! <laughs> and, like people think I'm being funny. John, when you were bobbing your head out of the water, I was laughing, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe either, you should have stopped the boat. <laughs> so, parasailing is a nay-nay. I thought it would be safer, there's a sail. But I did not sail. I para-dragged, I para-bounced, I para-waved. Still, I continued to drag my near lifeless body. This was in Maui, there were some tourists from Japan on the beach, they were fascinated with me. 
They thought it was a show and I don't blame them. He goes up and he goes under. Watch, watch, watch. He goes up again. You know, he goes like a free weary. <laughs> they said something to me afterwards. They said, how come you don't let go? <laughs> you got a point there. I wish I'd talked to you before I went. <laughs> bungee jumping. No, I never, I never went bungee jumping, no. People ask you, John, are you afraid the bungee's gonna snap? No. I know it's gonna snap. <laughs> Why be afraid of stuff you know is gonna happen? But if the bungee snapped, you'd go in the water. Nay, nay. <laughs> I would go through the water. There's stuff after the water. A few years ago in a family reunion, my family took me camping. I'm not a big camper, I don't understand it. If you like to camp, I think that's wonderful. But people at camp think that they have to, oh, you have to come with us, it's different. No, it's all camping. <laughs> we went camping up in Maine, which is beautiful, but it's also the setting of most of Stephen King's novels. <laughs> and we're asking directions and people are saying creepy Maine stuff, you know, like, going way up there, huh? <laughs> yeah, why? Just saying. W what does that mean? And so we go to the end of Maine, near Russia, and I think we're, I think we're camping in the Winnebago. Nay, nay, we're gonna leave the Winnebago and hike. Hiking? That's my favorite. How did they know I like to hike? Odds are, at any given time, if you can't find me, I'm hiking. They, they gave me my luggage. They didn't tell me to bring any camping stuff. I had on a black velour Sean John sweatsuit. I look like a panda. <laughs> and I'm dragging my luggage through the woods like Gollum on his way to Mordor. You don't have any family. They took away the Winnebago. <laughs> Stupid fat hobbit says. That was the precious. And when you camp, they hide the food up in a tree. So in the middle of the night, I woke up up, up starving and, the, and the, the food is in the tree because bears can't climb trees. Well, neither can I. So that tree had to come down now, didn't it? I paid the fine and I apologized. So, well, now the summer is over and in a few months, I starred in this musical on Broadway called Hairspray. And yeah, and I've, I've done it. John Travolta played the part in the movie, which is weird because we read for a lot of the same stuff. I, I remember those Pulp Fiction auditions. I'm like, you're gonna get this. No, you're gonna get it. Uh, but everything great in my life has a catch to it. I've already played the part on Broadway. It's a wonderful musical, but in Hairspray, I played a woman. That's just the way my life goes. John, do you wanna be the lead in a Broadway musical? Yeah. Okay, put this dress on. And they made me shave my eyebrows. So for two years, I walked around with, with no eyebrows. Socially, it was difficult. When you have no eyebrows, people don't know what's wrong. <laughs> but they're pretty sure something ain't right. <laughs> and maybe we should take the next elevator, honey. <laughs> have a wonderful day, everybody. A pleasure as always. Jerry, I love you, thank you. We'll see you later, everybody. John Panette.